Hi there, I'm Dr. Yanis Gerstens. Uh, I'm going to see my next patient. I believe she has HIV. Come in. Hello there, Mrs. Sharp. What's wrong? I've got a fever. Let me check. Oh, that is a very high temperature. That's bordering on 40 degrees Celsius. Oh. Uh, Anna could be also experiencing headaches. Oh. How's your head, Anna? I've got a headache. Is it bad? Yes. It okay. Hurts. She could also be experiencing swollen lymph nodes. Oh, yes, they swollen. are swollen. They are very swollen. Are you feeling uh, at all anything else, Anna? Sweaty! Sweaty? <laughs> yes, definitely. So we've seen the symptoms. Swollen lymph nodes indicating that there's lots of lymphocytes around. We also see that Anna's been very sweaty. She has headaches and is generally suffering from a fever. And the role of fever is to help in phagocytosis. Most phagocytes, such as macrophages, work better under higher temperatures. Although a raised temperature above 40 degrees C could mean death for Anna. Okay then, Anna, would you like to know a bit more about your condition? Yes. Here is something I prepared earlier. This is uh, the HIV infection. As you can see, we have a HIV retrovirus here. It has GP120 glycoproteins on its uh, alpha membrane. We see that this is a lipid bilayer. We then have the viral protein coat. We then have the capsid, we have two RNA strands within there, and we also have three very specific enzymes. Okay then, so how does the HIV infection <laughs> affect T lymphocytes, or your T helper cells? Well, I shall tell you. Okay, here we have CD4 receptors and CCR5 receptors on the uh, cell surface membrane of the T lymphocyte. Now, when the GP120 uh, glycoprotein binds with the CD4 receptor, a complex forms. And uh, that allows the GP41 chain to extend with its hydrophobic uh, interactions into the cell surface membrane of the T lymphocyte. A uh, capsid is inserted into the T lymphocyte, the T helper cell. That capsid breaks apart, we then have two strands of RNA. Okay, these need to be coded into DNA for proteins to be synthesized for the virus. So, what are these three enzymes? Well guys, let me tell you. Okay, we now have reverse transcriptase. Okay, now reverse transcriptase, the role of this. Taking an RNA strand and converts it into a DNA strand. And that happens through two different uh, catalysts on the uh, reverse transcriptase which basically enable one chain of DNA to be created then the mRNA splits apart and then that single stranded DNA then gets turned into a double helix through some more nucleotides which are added. That's the role of reverse transcriptase. I just want the medicine! So then after having the uh, reverse transcriptase element uh, producing a DNA, viral DNA strand we then need to integrate that into the host DNA's, uh, host cell's DNA. Now, for that to happen, the viral DNA must then enter the nucleus. Um, before it does, the uh, DNA integrase will cleave off two nucleotides from either end of the viral DNA to produce sticky ends. These sticky ends will then be integrated into the host DNA, and with integration into the host DNA complete, a signal protein activating the turning on of the viral gene will then enable the viral gene to then be transcribed and translated into new viral proteins. Okay, so we've got new viral proteins. What are we going to do with them? What are we going to do with them, Anna? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Just four. Now, we're then going to take the protease element, the enzyme that came within the capsid to begin with, and that's going to slice these big long proteins into smaller protein molecules which can then assemble around more viral RNA to produce another capsid and indeed new virus particles. Now, when the new virus particle then exits the cell, can you tell me what it is to, uh, what the word is for ex exiting a cell, Anna? Exocytosis. Brilliant. Exocytosis. Okay, so we're there. <laughs> We're now going to have a viral. <laughs> We're now going to have a viral protein exiting the cell. It'll then take a part of the host cell uh, lipid bilayer with it, and also will then maintain its other GP120 glycoproteins. 
Now, being as this will now have antigens of viral DNA, uh, viral antigens on it, T killer cells will then take out this T helper cell. What will less T helper cells mean, Anna? Less antibodies. Brilliant. <laughs> Great. Right. Is that right? <laughs> that is right. We're gonna we're gonna have less cytokine stimulating differentiation of B cells. Now, do you want your medication? Yes, please. Tough. I haven't got any. <laughs> <laughs>